Let us assume that you are trying to write a code for building a calculator application. All right. You have written all your variables, every single thing is perfectly aligned. But at certain point, you suddenly find out that a user of yours try to do a division with the second parameter they have passed as zero. Now we know you cannot really divide a number with zero in the real world. That is not permissible in the real world. But in application, that guy tried to do that. Another example, let us say, you wanted to take the name of a candidate and its age of the candidate and a father's name, parent's name or something like that. You, you want to make a form. Now someone in the place of the age enters a text data. Once again, he can enter because he has a screen where he is entering, but that is not operable in the way let's say from the age you want to calculate what is um, you know his year of birth now you cannot do the mathematical operations on a string value you need a number for that in this sort of cases it is not a problem of your application because the application code is fine but the thing that arised over here was an exceptional situation how to handle these exceptional situations shall be our concern in this video start by creating a new file try except example so now the first question is what is try except okay why does this thing exist so try except is basically when you have let's say you're trying to do something okay some sort of an activity you're trying to do and when you're doing it there might be a chance that there might be some issues while running this particular thing in case of let's say an example can be that you're trying to uh, do a division operation okay it's a very classic example you're doing a division operation and while do it doing the division operation if someone supplies the second parameter as zero then it becomes an error so by default this particular statement is not wrong let's say if i'm writing uh, for example like this so let's take from the user so a equals to taking from the user i'm writing you know, int because i want integer input please enter number one okay i'm doing this i'm doing b equals to one second integer input please enter number two and i'm doing like this print division result is a divided by b now if i run this program and I enter, like, please enter number one is 10, second number is 5, the answer is perfectly fine, the division is at least 2.0. But if I run the same program, I write the first one is 10, the second one is 0, it becomes an error. See, after this, it does not print anything, it becomes an error. It, it, it shows you some you know, orange colored text over here, which is some error text. And you find out that process finished with exit code 1, right? So it didn't work out. Now, how do you prevent this kind of situations? Now, the code is not wrong. The code is correct. But while you're trying to run this code, you might find out some different, different issues regarding this. So how do you solve this problem? You solve this problem in this way. Instead of printing just the division result is A by B, just try to do a... So you can see what kind of an error you're getting, right? You're, you're finding a zero division error. So this is the issue that is happening. So you can write like this. Try to do this. So we are trying to print the result, except there is a zero division error. And if it is so, they don't to print So we tell like this that try to do the division and uh, except uh, you know there is a zero division error. In case it is so, then please say that division is not possible for the divider being zero. We run this. This time I give zero as the second argument. See, it, it just prints this message and we get exit code zero. If exit code is one, I mean anything other than zero, that means there is some issue. Exit code is zero means everything ran perfectly fine. So we found out that please enter number one, 10, please enter number two is zero. And division is not possible for the, for the divider being zero. So this now is fixed. But if I write down current values right now, still it will be working perfectly fine. See, when its current values, it tries to do this. If there is a problem, then it comes over here. This is basically your try except, right? Try except works in this particular way. So let us try to see some more examples. So we understood the number one, number two. Now let us say, uh, here I am saying the zero division error happening because I am you know, giving a zero. Zero as a second number. What if I run this program, let's say, and here the number one I'm entering correct, the number two I enter some text. Now this is also impossible, right? Because we have written that it has to take an integer. I'm writing a text. If a presenter, 
will again find find out there is another error known as value error which was not taken care over here so we don't what to do in case of zero division error we did not say what to do in case of value error so let us do that also so i can put another except over here you can keep on putting as many accepts as you want so this except just see during division it will not happen it will happen over here while doing this part here it might happen So running this please enter number one, we are entering let's say 10 and 5, and you can see the output is 2.0. That is perfectly fine. This is the this is the okay case. If I want to go like the input is something else, this message is coming, but at the same point of time, this is also coming. Name error. Name A is not defined. That is because of this part. Here it is getting a name error. This line. See? Line number nine. This line. Because now this one got done. See, this is, remember what happens. Whenever there is a problem in any of the lines, it will directly jump into except part. Since there is a problem in line number two, it directly jumped into except part without you know actually putting some value in A and B. There is a problem, it will immediately leave everything over there and jump over here. Now in our case, we want to execute this line only if these two are, per these two are perfect. We do not want to run it separately. So now what is happening? If that is getting blocked over there, it comes to accept and then it jumps to line number eight to the second try. And it's try, it tried to do line number nine where we had this particular thing. And this one failed because A and B were not having any kind of values over here. I mean, there is nothing in A and B. A and B was not defined. So, but we do not want this division to take place even though there is no A and B. We want the division to take place only if there is some valid A and B. So I'll cut a little bit over here. So I want them to happen in a series. The first, this one, if it is correct, then this one, if it is correct, then this one. If something goes wrong in any of the situations, we don't want to do the division at all. So this except can directly be put over here. So all the accepts can be put over here. So now if I run it, if there is a zero division error, it will give me zero division error because here something goes wrong, it comes to the except part, right? Any of the except it should match. So this one matched with zero division error, it told this one. If I give a wrong value, it immediately stops executing these lines. It will directly jump here in the except part. And it found out that this one is matching. So it this one is matching. So it actually printed this particular text. So this is called try multiple accepts. Okay, so the first one I showed you that was one try, one accept. This is multiple except for one single try. That is what is going on. Another way we can handle this particular thing, which is not a very good way. In fact, another two ways are there, which is not a very good way, but uh, we can still do it. How? See. Here in this case, I do not want to handle these, uh, sorry, these two errors separately. And so handle it in one place. I can go like except this or this. And the message, then I have to show some generic message because I will actually not know whether it is value error or zero division error. I'm just writing, you know, considering everything together. I can just say something went wrong. So now either it is a value error or it is a zero division error. Now either it is a value error or it is a zero division error. In both the cases, it shall be coming over there only, right? In the same message. Let's try to run it and see. Number one, I'm entering something bad. It says something went wrong. Okay. If in number two, I enter the bad bad data, then also it will be something went wrong. If here I enter the correct data, but a zero division, then okay. It could not, could not read it. The or part was not taken. Okay. It did not find it out. It is not uh, you know, able to see it if there are multiple things on single line. All right, so in uh, you know, single line, it is unable to find out uh, this, this particular syntax is not working out. Let us uh, not use this. Okay, another thing that I was talking about, if in single line you have to write down, do not write anything. Just write except. Then in single line, it will work out perfectly fine. Now see this. If I run it, enter number one, I am entering some wrong value. You can see this ticking. I am entering some wrong value in the second one, it is ticking. And uh, I am entering some 
you know, wrong number over here, then also just taking. So no matter what you do, if you just try to accept, it will take for every sort of error, every kind of error. It will not, uh, you know, give you, it will, it will not, you're not specifying for which kind of error you want to do it. You're saying accept. Means anything goes wrong, you please come over here, right? And that is why writing something went wrong. Because it is difficult to find out what went wrong exactly. Right. So you're trying to find out that, okay, fine. Whatever went wrong, you go ahead and you kind of come over here, right? So it is trying to do that. If something goes wrong, you can now, but remember this, uh, just writing an accept, it makes the process very easy because you do not need to write down multiple accepts, but this is to be avoided as much as, as we can, because here we are losing the information at what kind of error the user got. So we cannot show him a customized message. I have to show the generic message that something went wrong. He will be like, what went wrong? What exactly went wrong? I mean, it can be a user who is trying to, let's say, enter number one and he is writing, let's say five like this. And it went, so it goes wrong. So you cannot show uh, with a particular message, but in case the same thing he had run over here, you can understand that we are going to tell him that, hey, value that he entered was not correct. So if here he enters five, he'll be like the given input is invalid. So he has a clear idea of where it went wrong. So he'll be like, okay, fine. So the input is wrong. Let me figure out how to correctly do it. That is why it is always better to go for this kind of structure than this kind of structure. So now we shall try to understand uh, there is something known as finally. What does finally do? So when you have tried something and whether you have received an exception or not, so this is an exception, right? This is also an exception. Whether an exception is received or not, you under any conditions you want to execute any, I know, a particular code, let's say. Okay, I'll give you an example. Let us say we are trying to do something like this. Let's say we are trying to make an application that talks to the database. So we are writing something like this. Let's say, try. It's the first line we are setting up the connection with the database. I'm just printing. I'm not doing anything, but I'm just giving an example. Set up database connection, operate on database and close database connection. These three things I want to do, let's say. Now, if I want to do these three things, and here, let's say I'm putting an accept, thinking that if something goes wrong, that will be taken care of over here. I'm not printing that. Retry. Right, if something goes wrong, it will tell you retry. That's it. But don't notice one thing. Let us say the error, let's say, happened, happens on the operation part. Okay, here. So it will no longer close the database connection, right? It will find the error, it will jump into the except block. It will say retry and it will stop. Now let's say, now this time, the guy who was operating on database, he decides not to work. He decides, no, I'll not do anything more. So I'm trying and it is failing, I'll not do anything. Do you understand the fact that the database connection is never closed? The connection remains open. So just see to this particular example, uh, this closed DB connection, you will do under every condition, whether the case is successful or a failure, database should be closed always. So you cannot leave it open. This you can put in finally block. So finally will be executed irrespective of whether there is a, you know, exception condition or everything was fine. It will always be executed. So right now here, there cannot be any error, but anyway, let us see. So let's set up the DB connection, operate the DB connection and close the DB connection. Okay. Now let us say, uh, just to raise an exception, I myself am writing down something like this, print 20 by zero, just, just to, you know, 30 by zero, just to raise an exception. Now see, okay. Set up DB connection, operate on the DB, it comes to retry. That means it comes to exception. And then again, it says close the DB connection. So this will be anyway done every single time no matter what is happening. This will always be done. Now let us try to uh, learn a little bit about files. Okay. How we can read files or write files, things like this. Try except will be used over there. When you try to do files, the try except will be used over there. See this thing. So I'm calling this thing file handling. So what you can do with this? We can read, write a file using Python basically, right? So since we can read and write a file, so we can create a file using this. Let's have to write a new file. So I can create a new file. That file can be saved somewhere. 
right? Especially typically in the project directory, that will be saved somewhere, and you can go ahead and you can you know in a read a file, you can get the you know contents of a file and things like that. So let us try to see how we can do that. So let us say, uh, I I want to create a text file. Okay, so I'm going to call it. Or let's say my file equals to open and write down the name of the file you want to create and create a file with the name let's say my file dot text and since I want to write it I'll go for W so now what will happen it will open this file and it will start writing whatever I'm writing within this see how to do it actually if I just just run this program and not do anything see this file has come my file dot text it does not have any text, but it has come. If I delete it, now let us try to uh, actually add some elements in the in this particular file. So I'll write like my file dot write. So to write this one line over there, I'm running this once again. Again, the file comes. Open it and see the line is there. Yeah, hi, how are you? That's how easy files are, right? It's, it's extremely easy. Let's try to change it to hello guys. It says hello guys. It does not uh, no, append with the previously whatever was written. It simply writes hello guys. That's it. Simply writes that. Now let's say instead of doing like this, instead of opening write mode, I want, I want to write in append mode. And I wrote something else. I run it. Come over here, see, this line got added. So now I am adding something, it is getting added over there. Why it is getting added, it is getting added because now you are running in append mode. So if you write in write mode, it will be just writing the data, whatever you are writing, and run in append mode, it will be keeping on adding more and more, more and more data within this. So now here we wrote in a uh, you know, single line, we could have written multiple lines also, something like this. Backslash in. That will take it to the next line. And it's I'm writing this time, new line. So now you can see, it will appear in the new line. Okay, so first it is blank because I deleted that, I did not keep anything. I just gave a new line, so it came to the new line, it wrote the new line. Again, I want to run it. Again, I want to run it, three times, let's say. New line, new line, new line, it is coming, it is coming up like this, right? So one after another. So what is happening? Whenever I'm writing new line, this is adding the new line. But I ran it multiple times. So A is append mode. So I'm adding with it. If I read, I can run in R mode. R will give me the operation to the functionality to read a particular file, right? So read is once again also okay. I mean that's perfectly fine. Right. And how do you read it? So I don't need to do write anymore. I have to go like contents equals to my file dot read. Now if I run this, it is, actually I need to print it somewhere, print the contents. And see the text is coming up, whatever was written in the file, the text is coming up. So in this way you can read, write and open a file. Okay. This is how it happens. Now let us say, uh, I am deleting this file, let's say from here. And I want to read in R mode, okay? And to open in R mode. Now, if I run it, I'll find out what exception, file not found error. So it says that there is no such file. How can you open it up? Because I deleted it. I deleted the file. When you're writing or you're appending, that's fine. But you're trying to read it. How can you read it if the file itself is not there? That means you need to put what? A try exception. Right? did not end up with the exit code one or something and, and no no such bad stuff so it is like perfectly fine okay the file got opened and it tried to open the file it did not find it it just told the file does not if file is not found now if i send it in a, in a different way let's say w okay. i can make a big program out of this let's say i can put this entire thing in a definition define operate file and I'll take the mode, R, W or whatever, right? So I want to just take this thing. So let us say, 
I have to uh, open it up in whichever mode I want. So I can go like mode. I pass the mode over here. Then we'll check like this. If my file dot mode is uh, R, then I want to read it. So in this way I can check it. Else if my file dot mode let's say W then I want to write down something. So then I want to go like my file dot write new line written. For the append case, New line appended. Now that I have written all these things, now I can go ahead and try using it. So I can go like operate file, let's say R. It will tell that the file request is not found. If I run in, run in append mode, then see nothing is coming, absolutely nothing. Let us try to read the file once again, and this time we will find out this text. New line appended. So because it wrote the line, right? When I added this, it actually wrote the line. New line appended. So if I run it in A mode for, let's say, a couple of times, right? so you'll find out the new line appended is coming multiple times. A couple of times, if I run it, you can run it through a loop also if you want. Now if I open up the R, you'll find out in the same line, it'll be like new line appended because we never give the backslash in. It'll be like adding one right, 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 right side, if you want going like that. That is how this particular thing is working. Now let us say I do not want it be like that. So I just I can just go ahead and I can delete the file. So I'll just you know it is very easy. Just go ahead and write in right mode. Right will automatically remove the thing. And I want to add backslash n in case of appending. Or let's say here at the end I'm adding this. So now that I wrote it, if I read it. You'll find out there is only one line says that new line written. Now, if we keep on appending more and more lines, so I can just run in A mode, right? Three times I wrote. So now see this. If I write like this, it is coming. So three append that has happened. After writing, first one line appended, again another line appended, again another line. Three lines got appended after the first writing. This is how you operate on files. So just change the W, A, and R, and you'll be able to operate on files. And this is a practical example of try except also.